How's it going and welcome back to our next episode on how to create JavaScript. Now in this lesson you're going to learn about something called functions inside JavaScript and functions is something we use constantly when we create any sort of JavaScript code and it's something we use in order to easier structure our code or reuse code later on inside our scripts. So when it comes to these functions, we have two different reasons for using them. The first one is that we want to create a result immediately inside our code, or we want to create an answer for other functions to use inside our JavaScript. So when it comes to these functions, we have three different types. We have something called the name function, which is what we're going to mainly use here at the beginning of this course. We have something called an anonymous function. And then we have something called a immediately invoked functional expression, which is quite a fancy way of saying the name of a function. Uh, but there's some key differences between these three functions, which we're going to go over in this episode here. So when it comes to these functions, I'm going to go ahead and take them one by one. As you can see in front of me, I do have a basic index page inside my website here. Now I just want to point out that in this lesson here, I will be using an external file instead of what we usually do by writing the JavaScript code directly inside the index page by writing it in between the script tags. So this is going to be the first episode where we do actually use an external file by simply linking to it inside our index page. So Whenever I write JavaScript inside this main.js, it's going to do the exact same thing as writing it inside the index page, just so you're aware of it. So the first example I want to create for you is something called a named function. Now a named function we create by writing the function declaration. Then we create some kind of name for it, just like we do with variables, we can think of anything. So I'll just call it test example. Do you notice that when we use multiple words, it's a common habit inside programming that the words coming after the first word are going to start with a capitalized letter. So in this case, the E for the second word is going to be capitalized. So after the name, we write parentheses, then we write curly brackets, and then we open and close the curly brackets. Then whatever goes in between this block or code, which is whatever is inside the curly brackets, is going to be the code that is going to execute once I call on this function here. The code that we can write in between the curly brackets can be anything from mathematical equations to just generating a random string or something. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a variable, which is going to be called greeting. I'm going to set it equal to hi, my name is Daniel. If I can actually spell my own name, there we go. Then afterwards, what I want to do is I want to actually get some kind of result from it. Now, we can, if we want to go in here and say console log, console dot log, and then simply console log out greeting, which is the variable up here, we will then say inside the console, um, hi, my name is Daniel. So what we basically created here is a block of code that doesn't actually run inside the website until we actually call on the function inside our JavaScript. So what we can do to call it is we can go down to the next line here and say we want to run the actual function called test example, parentheses, semicolon. And then if we were to look inside the console, you can now see it says, hi, my name is Daniel, because I'm now running the function. Now, an important thing to mention about these name functions is that we can actually create them any place inside the code we want, and then we can use them any place inside our JavaScript code. So you don't need to place it a specific place for it to work inside uh, the JavaScript when we want to call on it down here where it says, for example, test example. So the function could be either at the top or I could place it below test example and it's still going to work inside the browser. So the order doesn't really matter when we create these name functions here. Now, when it comes to functions, we usually do it in a slightly different way because instead of directly outputting anything from inside a function, we can also go ahead and return a value using the function. So instead of console locking it, instead we can actually go ahead and return some kind of result. So instead I'm returning greeting and as you can see right now it doesn't actually say anything inside the browser here. But instead what we do is that when we call the function down here, we still have the result, which is hi, my name is Daniel, but we stored it. We haven't actually outputted it yet. If I want to output the result from inside the function, the way we usually do it is by going down where I did actually call in the function and console lock it from down here instead. So I'm actually going to console lock the entire function. And as you can see inside the browser here, inside the console, we get, hi, my name is Daniel. 
Now, the last thing I want to show regarding name functions is that we can actually pass in parameters from outside the function and into the function so we can use it inside the function code. So in this example, you can actually see we wrote, hi, my name is Daniel. But what if I want to submit an actual name into the function instead of just having this default Daniel name inside the function? Now, the way we can do that is using something called an arguments object, which is just a fancy way of saying that we can pass data into the parentheses and send it to the function up here. So inside the function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a placeholder. Now the placeholder can be any sort of name. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it A. And if I want to add more than just one, I can say comma and just say B if I wanted to, or space B doesn't really matter with the spaces. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and add one piece of data and send it to it. So now we have a placeholder in here. And what I can do is I can say, well, when I say, hi, my name is Daniel, I'm just going to go ahead and delete Daniel and add a string operator, which means that we combine a variable to a string to add one string, essentially. So what I can do is I can say, I want to add a at the end of it. So down here, what we do actually console log it and call on the function in here. I can go ahead and add a piece of data into the parentheses in order to send it into the placeholder we called A. So what I can do is I can say double quotes and then I can say, right now you guys can see down here in the console, it says, hi, my name is undefined because we haven't defined A yet. So what I can do is I can say Nick if I wanted to. And now it's going to say, hi, my name is Nick inside the browser here. So this is one way we can do it. Now, just to clear something up that you might get confused about later, if I were to go on top of here and create a variable called name set it equal to Daniel just to create the other name again and then use the variable name inside uh, the parentheses down here do notice that it does still work if I go inside the console it still says hi my name is Daniel because variable name is equal to Daniel and we use variable name inside the function down here uh, which is just to show you that the A up here is a placeholder it doesn't have to match with whatever's inside the parentheses down here so you can still use different name variables inside when you call on it down here. It doesn't have to match up with whatever's up here. Now, the next function I want to talk about is something called an anonymous function, which is slightly different than a named function. Now, an anonymous function is something we usually trigger by either tying it to a variable or something called an event. Now, events is not something we've talked about yet, but it is something I'm going to teach you later in this course, since it's pretty essential to know about events if you want to do anything with JavaScript whenever the user interacts with a website. So events is pretty essential, but we're not going to talk about it yet. Now, when I want to create one of these anonymous functions, I can do it by, like I said, tying it to a variable. So what I can do is I can create a variable that I can give some kind of name. I'm just gonna use the same name as the previous function in the previous example. So I'm gonna say test example. Then I'm gonna set it equal to a function. And because this function is anonymous, we don't give it a name. So instead we'll just say parentheses, curly brackets, and then we can just create the same code inside the curly brackets if I wanted to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in. Now, if I want to call in this function here, like I said, we can do it using events or we can do it using, uh, but just calling on the variable. So what I can do is below here, I can go and refer to the variable. So I'm gonna say test example. Then I'm going to just close it off here. Now, it's not going to work just quite yet because when we have a function tied to a variable, which is an anonymous function, the way that we activate the function inside the variable is by creating a pair of parentheses right behind the variable name. So this is similar to what we did up here, in fact, where we just simply called on the function name and then the parentheses. So, you know, you might be asking, well, what is the difference here? And I will get to that in just a second. So. What I'm going to do is right now, we didn't actually pass in a, a parameter. So I'm just gonna go and delete that and write Daniel instead. So we don't get the error message in here. Now, we haven't actually console logged it yet. So we need to do that as well. Because what we did is we actually returned a result inside greeting. So I can actually console.log, parentheses. There we go, and save it. And the same way as we would before, if I wanted to pass in any sort of parameters, I just do it by including it inside the parentheses here and then inside the function and then inside the actual place down here. So we could say A. So we can say variable A is equal to Daniel. 
There we go. And I would like to get the result inside the function here. So this is how we can create an anonymous function. Now, the difference between an anonymous function and a name function is something called hoisting. Now, when we create a function like we did up here that is named, when we create the function, it gets stored at the top level inside our JavaScript code. Uh, which means that we can use the function whenever we want to inside the code, whereas a anonymous function is hoisted in a slightly different way. Now, we haven't talked about this yet, and we will in actually not that many episodes, but we're gonna talk about something called scopes and something about hoisting. When we create a variable, the code doesn't actually see the code in the exact same way as we wrote it inside the function. Again, I don't want to get off a sidetrack here. I'm sort of scared that this is going to confuse too many of you. So we're not going to talk about hoisting just quite yet. We will in a few episodes from now. Then we'll get some very simple examples to illustrate what exactly hoisting is. Um, but the basic idea here is that when we create a anonymous function because it's equal to a variable, the variable gets stored at the top level in the same way as the function does. But we don't actually have the value from the function yet until we actually get to it down in the script. So that's the basic difference between anonymous and named functions. Again, if I just confused you, just forget about everything I said, we'll get to it once we do actually get to talk about hoisting. And later we will actually talk more about anonymous functions. So next example. Now we also have something called a immediately invoked functional expression. And this is basically a function that again, like the anonymous one doesn't have a name, but it's going to run as soon as the code gets loaded inside the browser. So if I were to create a function here, just by creating function, parentheses, curly brackets, then I can create some kind of code here like what we did up here. But instead, I would like to just console log this inside the actual console. So I'm going to say Daniel, and I'm just going to go ahead and console log it instead of returning it like we did down here in the code. So I'm just going to console dot log greeting. Now, as you can see, we get a uncaught syntax error. If I want this blogger code to run immediately inside the browser, we do need to do a couple of things to make it into a immediately invoked functional expression. So what we need to do is first of all, we need to wrap this entire function inside a pair of parentheses. And then afterwards, what we need to do in the same way as when we would call out a function by this example here, I'm just gonna bring it down so we can see it. When I want to call the test example function, we then say test example and then add the parentheses at the end here. So in the same way, if I want to call this function immediately, we need to add a pair of parentheses right after the function, if that makes sense. So we're going to add it right before the closing parentheses that was wrapped around the entire function. So in this example here, make sure you put the parentheses in the right place. We have a opening parentheses, the function with the curly brackets, then a opening and closing parentheses, and then the closing parentheses that belongs to the first opening one. Okay, so when we do this, as you can see, it's going to run the code immediately as the document gets loaded inside the browser. And as you can see inside the console, we do have, hi, my name is Daniel. So these are functions. And what we're going to focus on at least in the beginning are just named functions, which is the first example we did, which is pretty simple to, to use. And once we have done a couple of examples in a couple of exercise files, probably in the next episode, uh, we'll get to actually experiment a little bit with these functions and see how we can use them inside our JavaScript code in order to do something with the data that we have inside our website. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.